Hey, good evening, everyone. Just a minute. Okay. So, hope uh, you all are doing fine. So, welcome you all to an academy and uh, do take the need PG exam mock test tomorrow. So, all India mock test tomorrow at 9. Still, you have not registered. Do log in to the app, register for the test, and use the code Dr. Dixit to unlock that. Okay, hi, hi, DK, hi, how are you? Yeah. And and we have a very new batch starting uh, from day after to yeah on 30th of March, which is again a 1.5 month, one and a half months course, which is actually targeting your recent exam. Okay. Retroperitoneum, what you want to study? What you want to study? Okay, tell me. So, I'll like, so let us start with this uh, session. Let us start with this session. And do if you are planning to join an academy, we have a lot of subscription options for you, and you can use the code for the discounts. So, just give me a minute. So, this is the question that I'm going to discuss right now. Yeah. Hi, Maria. A patient with chronic venous insufficiency presents with pigmentation and ulcer. So just tell me the concept of this. Just tell me this. A patient of chronic venous insufficiency presents with pigmentation and ulceration over the limb. If possible, please write the complete seep. Please write the complete seep in this case. Write the complete seep. Tell me. Not only C1, C2, C3, yeah, we have an option that is okay. But tell me the complete seep. Okay. So, a patient presents to you with a chronic venous insufficiency and this is the profile. Very good. Very good. Write the complete seep, Monica. Seep. Only mentioning C1, C2 is not going to work. Let us study this concept and then we will come back to this question. So let us quickly revise this concept. So now today the first topic that we are going to discuss in this uh, the surgery pearls. This is the concept of chronic venous insufficiency. So when we talk about chronic venous insufficiency. There are lot of things that we have to understand yeah? and one of them is C. But before that, what is the basics, what is the basic concept of chronic venous insufficiency? It is defined as blockage of the venous system, blockage of the venous system. And when there is blockage of the venous system, then therefore what will happen, there is increase venous pressure and this is often referred as venous hypertension hypertension venous hypertension now all the features all the features which occur in chronic venous ins insufficiency very good Varun very good very good this is because of venous hypertension and because of venous hypertension what all changes that we get to see you get to see dilated dilated veins so dilated veins if you talk about less than 1 mm they are known as telangiectasias telangiectasias up to 3 mm they are known as reticular veins more than 3 mm they are known as varicose veins so this is one very important thing then you have lot of other changes also because of this venous hypertension what are they let us try to understand because of venous hypertension there is leakage of so leak of wbc's and since there is leak of wbc's there is something which is known as eczema by eczema because of this intense desire for what scratching or itching what else happens because of this there may be damage to 
damage to capillaries and because there is damage to capillaries there will be bleeding and because there is bleeding now what will happen because of because if there is bleeding what is going to happen just see there will be pigmentation there will be pigmentation again but see if there is eczema there will be damage and there will be ulcer you know ulcer a long standing ulcer a long standing ulcer will actually lead to what scc and this is what is referred as marzolin's ulcer marzolin's ulcer Are you get it but see even this will heal but the healing will happen with what students fibrosis and do you know therefore there is an area of narrowness over the medial malleolus and this is what is known as so fibrosis at the level of gator zone this is what is known as lipodermatosclerosis and then there is also compensatory hypertrophy compensatory hypertrophy of the calf and that is why you get to see that typical inverted champagne bottle like leg yeah that is why you have inverted champagne bottle like leg and these all points are very important very 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 important now whenever we want to grade this venous insufficiency we take help of a clinical score which is known as seep so let us talk about the seep grading the seep is a grading system now what is the big drawback you people are always answering this has c1 c2 c3 c4 you don't understand the importance of e a p also when answering you might say that c is what e is what but you never write complete seep so it's my responsibility to teach you this so that by the end of this lecture you're able to write confidently seep c stands for clinical and when you talk about clinical what clinical are we seeing here students what clinical are we seeing c1 includes both telangiectasias telangiectasias point number 1 and it will also include the reticular veins the reticular veins so telangiectasias and the reticular veins c2 if you talk about c2 what is that varicose vein varicose vein C three, we have edema. C four, we have four A, that is pigmentation. Four B, four B, that is lipodermatosclerosis. Four C, is corona flea bacteria. Corona flea bacteria. C five, is a healed ulcer. and c6 is a non healing ulcer is a non healing ulcer so try to understand this e also e stands for etiology always remember if you know the cause then that is e secondary if you don't know the cause if it is by birth it is e congenital if it is not by birth but you don't know the cause it is e primary so we have e primary e secondary and e congenital then we have a for anatomy a for anatomy when you talk about the anatomy it could be involving the superficial venous system superficial venous system it could be involving the deep venous system and it could be involving the perforators Are you getting? That is equal to A P. The last in this component is the P. Now many of you don't understand the importance of this P, and you commit the error here only. So pathophysiology. When you talk about pathophysiology, either it will be P O that is obstructive, or it will be P R that will be reflux. 
बच्चे रिफ्लक्स जनरली हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ इनकॉम्पिटेंट वॉल्व इनकॉम्पिटेंट वॉल्व और यू कैन से इनकॉम्पिटेंट एस एफ जे और एस पी जे जंक्शंस यू गेटिंग दिस दिस इज वॉट इज एक्चुअली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ लेट इज गो टू द क्वेश्चन एंड सी वॉट इज द आंसर हेयर सो विद इन वन मिनट वील सी एवरीथिंग अ पेशेंट ऑन अ पेशेंट ऑफ क्रॉनिक वीनस इनसफिशियंसी presents with pigmentation since there is pigmentation students it will be what c 4 a agreed or no there will be ulceration and ulceration this is an active ulcer this is an active ulcer so it will be c 6 the patient underwent a doppler scan which showed ecogenic debris students debris inside a vessel this will be reducing the flow rate and therefore this debris is going to cause obstruction are you getting this p obstruction which also showed the debris in the popliteal vein popliteal vein if you talk about is a part of deep venous system deep venous system so anatomy if you talk about is d with below knee incompetent perforator some below knee perforator incompetency is also there सो बच्चे इफ देर आर परफोरेटर्स हेयर इन कॉम्पिटेंट मे बी इन कॉम्पिटेंट परफोरेटर सो एनाटमी इज इन्वॉल्विंग द परफोरेटर ऑल्सो एंड डू यू नो इन कॉम्पिटेंट परफोरेटर्स इन कॉम्पिटेंट परफोरेटर वॉट डज दैट मीन दैट मीन्स दैट देयर विल बी रिफ्लक्स एंड देयर फोर पी आर्स विल ऑल्सो बी देयर बिकॉज ऑफ दिस ही हैज अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ डी वी टी सिक्स मंथ्स बैक सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट ई this is secondary and why it is secondary because it is secondary to dvt so what will be the answer c4 plus 6 an etiology secondary anatomy deep venous system plus perforator pathophysiology obstruction due to the debris and reflux due to the incompetent perforator is this clear to everyone or no varun at least you have tried i appreciate that is zeal i getting so answer here will be the c6 because it's the higher one but this is not the complete way this is not the way to write one more thing that you should be knowing is because in this neat there was a question on this but see when we talk about the varicose veins if the varicose veins if they are symptomatic if they are asymptomatic that will become c2a if it is symptomatic that will become c2s if it is recurrent then that will be c2r so c2a c2s and c2r c2a C2S and C2R. Are you getting this point or no? Yeah. So this is a very, 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 very simple concept. Now, when we are talking about this chronic venous insufficiency and when we have when we have discussed so many things, let us also discuss the treatment options. Let us also discuss the treatment or the management plan. Management when we talk about students always remember the investigation of choice. the investigation of choice is a doppler study it's a doppler study simple doppler study is helpful what else is important let us try to understand the best may be our ct or mr ngo but doppler study is sufficient for this intervention if you talk about or treatment of choice if you talk about the first line and this is also considered the treatment of choice is equal to conservative the first thing that you will be advising the patient is the concept of limb elevation so why limb elevation because this is going to reduce the peripheral pooling of the blood so not only limb elevation is there you also ask the patient to enroll himself or herself in a physiotherapy program and along with that you will advise the patient to wear a below knee graded compression stocking 
graded compression stocking बच्चे according to the UK और US convention grade 2 20 to 30 mm Hg is the pressure which is required along with that if the patient is having ulcer so for the patient who is having pigmentation for the patient who is having lipodermatosclerosis for these two patients we are going to start the tablet Trentil what is Trentil? this is pentoxyphylin this is pentoxyphylin so pentoxyphylin is very important 400 mg TDS for 6 months so 400 mg TDS for 6 months this is what is next is so this is about the concept of pentoxyphylin next is but in case of ulcer what to do along with the above above treatment you have to go for and along with that you will have to go for debridement why debridement along with debridement you need a biopsy because it may be associated with what SCC and after that after that you will advise a multi-layered multi-layered compression bandaging multi-layered compression bandaging when we talk about multi-layered compression bandaging there are a lot of things we do what is that so what is the concept of multi-layer compression bandaging we have four layer dressing four layer dressing and this is sometimes referred as Bisgard's regimen this is known as Bisgard's regimen we may also advise the patient una boot una boot so Bisgard's regimen or una boot now when you talk about Bisgard's regimen what is that try to understand the inner layer the inner layer is of the inner layer is of yeah cotton the inner layer is cotton the second layer the second layer that we see is orthopedic wool orthopedic wool the third layer we have is the compression elastic crepe elastic crepe and then fourth layer is again an elastic crepe so what is importance of this let us see the third layer this is elastic crepe and the fourth layer this is also elastic crepe now what is the difference in between the compression which is given you know you are doing a compression bandaging the compression is given by these two the compression and what compression 30 to 40 mm Hg not beyond that because if you increase the pressure beyond that the capillary return via lymphatics is impeded so itna hi chahiye next is next is bache one third of the pressure one third pressure is contributed by this and two third pressure is contributed by this now the next very important thing that we all have to understand if this conservative management fails conservative management fails for chronic venous insufficiency will plan what intervention now when you talk about intervention there are three standard interventions that we do what are they let us see it can be thermal ablation it can be thermal ablation in thermal ablation we have two things we have radio frequency ablation and we have ebla endovenous laser ablation the second is we can go for Trendelenburg surgery Trendelenburg surgery students what is the aim of Trendelenburg surgery it is ligation of what ligation of junction between the incompetent 
incompetent superficial venous system and deep venous system along with that plus minus venous stripping so you know you know that when you are going for venous stripping you have to do a above knee venous stripping never do we go for below knee now when you are talking about this Trendelenburg surgery what surgery do we do now this surgery depends upon the site of insufficiency the site of insufficiency now suppose we got the answer that it is a GSV insufficiency or suppose we got the answer that it is SSV so what are you going to do ligation of you are going to go for ligation of SFJ in this case and here ligation of SPJ sephenopapletal junction will we go for venous stripping will we go for venous stripping answer could be yes but above knee yes but above knee this is what now when you are talking about above knee venous stripping what will be the problem if you go for below knee here there is no venous stripping but see the answer is nerve injury and this need that means the last version of need it has a question on this which nerve injury is seen in what SFJ ligation and stripping of great saphenous vein answer is saphenous nerve saphenous nerve the reason why we don't go for below knee stripping because below knee if you see suppose this is the target vein suppose this is the target vein you have to understand along with this vein the nerve may be also going so when you are going for a stripping when you are going for a stripping you'll have to understand we prefer to go for the above upper knee or you can say above knee stripping what is the advantage when you are doing upper upper knee stripping there is no problem in case you do a below knee stripping you do a below knee stripping will also evolve the nerve along with that so remember we do a we do a above knee stripping above knee stripping in this case you like it okay so what nerve injury we do we see here sural nerve sural nerve what is the most common complication of both the surgeries answer is recurrence do you know the recurrence rate is as high as 30 percent so recurrence is the complication the third is the third is okay okay i'll use the third that we have is injection foam sclerotherapy injection foam sclerotherapy when you are talking about injection foam sclerotherapy there are two things what agent are we using answer is cetrol what is cetrol tetradecyl sodium tetradecyl sodium the second is sodium morhuate sodium morhuate the next is sir is it indicated for all what is the indication answer is less than 3 mm veins therefore you have to understand that it is not for varicose veins because the diameter of varicose veins is more than 3 next is generation of foam so if you talk about technique step 1 foam generation foam generation and how do you do this generation of foam in order to generate a foam we need to mix the air with the drug so you mix air with the drug what is the ratio that we require in the ratio 4 is to 1 that is 4 parts of air with 1 part of drug so you take a two way cannula you take a two way cannula I'll share that I'll share that image also so we take a two way cannula and we do this just a minute I'll share that image also how we do a foam generation just give me a second okay students this is how we do a Trendelenburg surgery try to understand we make an incision in the groin 
yeah so we make an incision in the groin can you see and after this this is my own surgery you dissect the junction try to see try to see what is this this is this is common femoral vein this is the common femoral vein and this is the great saphenous vein so this is the junction which we are targeting to ligate this is the junction which we intend to ligate and then after that what happens can you see these are the tributaries these are the fine tributaries which are ligated off and after that so these are all the tributaries which are ligated so can you see the vessel has been ligated now if you see the vessel has been ligated now what to do students we'll open up the lumen of the vessel we'll open up the lumen of the vessel just see can you see a vessel the lumen has been opened and what am i doing i am in you there is introduction introduction of a vein stripper so what is the name of this instrument again has been asked in the image this is make kastner this is make kastner so the instrument name of this instrument is make kastner pankaj i'll do i'll do definitely so make kastner stripper and then i am just advancing it i am just advancing it can you see now we are at the level of knee so we are at the level of knee and at the level of the knee i'll make one incision because i need to ligate this vessel here and strip the vessel above that so can you see i'm making the incision over the vein i'll dissect the vein so i'll i'll pull back the you can say bobbin and i'll dissect the vein and i will ligate it i ligate the lower end can you see and after ligating after ligating i'll divide it just see so after dividing it you know one end one end is secured now one end is has been secured and this is the another end from which the bobbin is coming out so what i will do i will ligate here also so that the bobbin cannot go back when i pull it now what see just see what i will see i will lock it and now i will try to pull it so can you see i have locked it now just see just see what are you doing this is the this is the stripper here this is the vein and outside the vein you have a bobbin so now what you will do when you will pull it this is a blind stripping just see when you will pull it the entire vein comes out can you see the entire veins come out? since this is a blind stripping that is why you have a risk of what avulsion you have a risk of avulsion can you see this is the vein that has come out next is i'll show you how we do this uh, mixture tesari's procedure what is this this is what is known as tesari's technique bachche bobbin is the front metallic part na bobbin that is what is bobbin yeah that is what is bobbin bachche what is this can you see this is one syringe this is a three way cannula this is a three way cannula when you will press this plunger the this plunger is going to get dilated when you will press this one this is going to get dilated so what you are doing what you are doing you are the intention is to mix the air with the drug and this technique this is what is known as tesari's technique you getting this this is what is known as tesari's technique done now you cannulate the vein under the guidance of ultrasound and you inject it or simply you can use for telangiectasias and this you don't require even cannula you can use the insulin syringe and do this is that clear or no yeah the next is 
so generation of foam step 2 injection of foam into target vein are you getting this or not? apart from this there are other techniques also which i am not interested with next is what is the treatment of what is the treatment for the perforators so incompetent perforators so in competent perforators how do you manage it the answer is you have three techniques the first is stab avulsion the stab avulsion the second is seps what is seps subfacial in class i have discussed this in detail and depth subfacial endoscopic perforator surgery and then we have trivex trivex is actually the brand name it is motorized or motorized flebectomy motorized flebectomy this is what is trivex are you getting these things so i think this is all for today and i hope you enjoyed the lecture so do join plus program of an academy it's wonderful you can use the code surgery live or you can use the code dr dikshit do not forget to follow me on an academy channel so that you don't miss notification of my classes do share the links of the classes with your friends and do uh, give your feedback in the comment section so i hope you enjoyed the class yeah 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 more such classes will be there yeah definitely so means this is just a free platform so we have a limitation we have the limitation of time and that is why in plus i routinely teach in this way only rather i am more elaborate in this yeah god bless you maria so definitely i'll be organizing much such uh, many more such sessions and this is my own, this is my concept of teaching this is how i teach in because surgery is a practical subject surgery you have to feel like many of you might have mugged up what is a trendelenburg surgery but until unless you don't know you'll never be able to understand how we strip out a vein i am apologetic because i am taking the class from my home otherwise if i would have been there at my hospital i would have called my ot assistant to get you the instruments also to show what is a make us nurse stripper etc which i routinely do in my classes anyway some day else i'll again share those things so till then bye bye do recommend an academy to your friends and do join the plus it's the, really the most wonderful platform and a lot of good teachers are teaching here so do make use of them let's crack it